What we have here is a piece of black cherry, 100 year old black cherry, that Jay in Tennessee sent to us. Jay's had this drying in his barn for about four years. He sent this along almost a couple of years ago and today we're going to turn it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! The piece is about seven and a half inches this way, about seven inches this way. It's about four inches tall and on this end it's about three and a half inches tall. What I'm going to do is take this over to my drill press. I'm going to drill a large flat spot in the middle here, drill a hole in the middle of that for my woodworm screw. We'll get it mounted up on the lathe and get to turning. I have the piece mounted up on woodworm screw with tailstock support. I'm going to be turning from the top side down, trying to keep this bark on here. If I come up this way, it sure will peel it right off. So I think some of it will stay. I don't know how much of it's going to stay. We'll, we'll just have to find out. We're going to be turning at just over 600 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to wear a glove for a while. Mask and face shield on. One of the most important things you can do for yourself when you're turning a natural type piece like this is stop often and see where you are, see what's developing, see if you want to take this all the way to round like this is or if you want to leave a little flat. Sometimes the flat looks better than, than not, uh, but that's up to you to determine that. Now there is some rot in this piece like here. I stuck a screwdriver in this hole right here and it comes over about that far. So we're likely going to have a hole, unless I come up from the bottom some, which I might do, I don't know. Give yourself a chance to see what's happening. Yeah, okay, I'm starting to like it. I think I am going to go sharpen up. Now this is really rotten right here. Either I can turn this down smaller and get rid of some of that, but I don't think I'll ever get rid of all of it. Or I can put some CA on there now to see what that gets us, but it's, it's going to be there. It's going to be a feature of this piece. Yeah, I guess that's what I'll do. I'm going to put some CA on there. And I'm often asked, what's CA, Phil? Well, this is CA. It's a super glue, basically. I use a stick fast brand. This is thin. Now when you're putting this much on, you got to be careful about the fumes. And as that dries, it's going to start smoking. And you just don't want to be around it. So I'm going to turn the camera off and step away. I'll be back in a minute. I don't usually like to do this, but I couldn't get this to harden up in there. So I went ahead and took some fine dust and shavings and shoved them in there. and. I've given it about a half an hour to dry because I used a lot of CA. I don't like to do it because, you know, you fill a crack, it looks like a filled crack to me. It doesn't usually look that good, but I, I didn't see where I had much choice in this case. So we'll see how it holds up after I do some more turning on it. I am going to have to do some more turning because I've got to get rid of all the staining that I've done with the CA around there. So we're still at about... I don't know where we were. I forgot now, haven't I? All right, about 710 RPM. Freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on.
Yeah, it's an improvement. It's not perfectly smooth, but that's okay. I actually kind of like it that way. I'm talking about this one spot right here. Actually, overall, it is pretty smooth now, so, and I am happy with that general shape, so I guess I'll move down here to the bottom and clean it up and put a tenon on there. And we'll just mark out for the tenon. Now I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. And that's good. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 180 grit. I'm going to sand all of the bark that I can reach which is most of it and I'll stop at 180 grit that's as fine as I go on the bark when I'm done with that I'll switch to my 2 inch sanding disc starting at 80 grit although I probably don't need to but I, I will uh, starting at 80 grit and working up through 400 grit and I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on I know you can't see much of that, sorry. Uh, I'm going to sand it until it's nice and smooth, clean. I'll come at it from every direction that I possibly can. Getting it as smooth as I can from every direction. And it's going to look really nice with some finish on there, I can tell you that. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 340, That's going to be pretty easy. So I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there, I'm pretty sure. See you in a bit. Well, that sanded up real nice. And I expect it to look real nice with some sanding sealer and then uh, shellac on it. And this is shellac based sanding sealer that I'm applying. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. It's a de-waxed shellac, also thinned, but it comes like that out of the can ready to use I don't do anything to it and the reason I left this a little bit pitted right here that my repair job is because it looks more natural that way than if I filled it and tried to make it perfect that's when it would look like it was filled this way it looks like it came that way now you're not going to be able to see the bark part but I'm going to put this on the bark and I'll just show you a little bit while I do that here I'm going to put two coats of this sanding sealer on here, it looks like, and then at least two coats of shellac, and then I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. See you later. I've got two coats of sanding sealer, two coats of shellac on the outside. I've only got one coat, or two coats of uh, sanding sealer on the bark. I didn't put any shellac on there because I'm going to cut most of it away and there'll just be a, a border around here, no point in putting it all over it. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and cut right about here, right up to the edge of this bark. I, I want to leave bark all the way around the outside. And in these places where I'm missing bark, there's not too many of them. I went through my wood chips and shavings and whatnot and pulled out some pieces of bark. Whoops, that I can just fit in there, glue in there, one way or another. I'll, I'll just use CA glue, glue those in, get some finish on them. 
take a Dremel tool and trim off so that it's flush around here. It's just a, it's just an easy way of taking care of that. But like I said, I just want to come right up to the edge of this bark and, and leave this here and take that away. I think that'll be about the right width of bark on there. We're going to be using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 700 RPM, mask and face shield on. Just heard something go flying, probably a piece of bark, yep, right there. And this piece is loose. Well, dang it, this might take more bark time than turning time. And you can see I'm just about to where I wanted to be. This is that flat spot. I guess that was a good thing that those came off and I stopped because I thought I had further to go. I can see, I can see more and more bark flying off. Well, I'm, I'm where I want to be, close enough right there. But now we've lost more of it around here. Hopefully we won't lose much more. I'm going to go sharpen up. I've adjusted my tool rest a little bit so I can do some shear scraping right here just along this top edge before we go down much further. I don't think I'm anywhere near close yet, but you know. Nope, got about an inch to go. I just like to double check. I don't always trust myself anymore. For those of us that are members of the Funnel Club, and for those of you that don't know, the Funnel Club are people that have turned a nice bowl and then gone through the bottom, made a hole, made a nice funnel out of this whole thing. Uh, uh, an easy way, or a helpful way, at least for me, to keep from doing that is to adjust your tool rest so that you're within, you're just about touching the bottom. Okay, so now I'm probably within an eighth of an inch or uh, even closer sixteenth of an inch of touching the bottom. Now all I have to do is watch that. I just have to watch that space. Every once in a while look over at it, measure to see how much more you have to go. Like I said, I got about a half an inch to go. So when I'm three eighths of an inch difference between my tool rest and the bottom of the bowl, I better really start thinking about what I'm doing. Okay, so that, that's just, it's a good easy reminder. But you do have to remember to look.
These are now, I've taken away about a quarter of an inch of what I had. And what did I say? I had uh, another three eighths to go, so another eighth of an inch or so. Now we're probably getting close. Yep, now we're down about 5 sixteenths of an inch. A quarter inch is usually my goal. And you know, we, ha we have fairly thick walls here. So this is a half an inch thick. I'm shooting for a quarter inch in the bottom, but if it's 5 sixteenths, who cares? This is half an inch thick up here. It just isn't that critical. It doesn't have to the bottom doesn't have to match the sides, and the sides don't have to match anything except your choice. How thick do you want those sides? Well, I want to be able to see this bark. I like the bark, and it's going to look better. So I'm, I'm always the natural guy. I'm always after leaving a part of the tree so it's recognizable that it was a tree, that sort of thing. I don't want it to be perfect. I'm going to sharpen up my negative rake scraper and scrape. Okay, time for sanding. Well, no, it's not time for sanding. It's time for bark repair. Because I think some things are obvious, like how to replace bark, it seems like that's obvious. You take a little piece of bark and you stick it in there and glue it on and, and you've replaced it. I, I don't usually show it. I've done it plenty of times on different pieces. This one, I don't know why I decided to show it to you, but I'm going to show it to you. I hope it's not boring. I hope it's not too obvious. These are some of the pieces that I picked up. I've individually held each one and blown it off with compressed air so it's nice and clean. I've blown all of this off with compressed air so it's nice and clean. I have my thin CA and my medium CA. I've got my accelerator here to make it dry quicker. And then I have this. <laughs> You might see if this is available anywhere. I haven't looked for a long time. I don't know if you can even see that. It's called gloves. I thought it was called liquid gloves, but it's called gloves. I've had this for probably more than 40 years, sitting over here on my workbench in three different places, three different houses. This workbench, it's been sitting there for 40 years, maybe longer, maybe 45 years. And, and it's, it's cool stuff. I don't know if it's still available. I'll, I'll check, probably. It's still lots of it in here. I just, you, you put it on your hands and it keeps super glue and paint and other things from sticking to your fingers. And it works really well. It, I, it's amazing how it works and then, and then it just washes off. It just goes on like lotion, just like hand lotion or something. Just squeeze a little bit out of here, put it on your fingertips or wherever you need it and and then you can just hold this right up here. If you get glue on your fingertips, it's not going to stick. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. Western Biomedical. This isn't very scientific at all. It's just a matter of finding a spot that you need something. Finding a piece of bark that looks like it might fit there. If it overhangs, that's okay. You can try and break it off, but I wouldn't. I, I'd just glue it on like that and, and then take a Dremel tool and come along here and either cut it off or sand it off. But if you break it, sure enough, it's gonna break back here where you don't want it to. And try and get it even with one side. If you, if you can't, if it has to hang over a little both sides, then that's okay, you just trim it up on both sides. It's just no big deal. Like I said, it's kind of obvious and that's why I've just never shown it. But I'll show a couple of pieces. I'm not gonna show all of this. This is gonna take some time. That looks pretty good right there. I need to get my glue ready to go. I'm going to use the, the medium CA when there's a big gap to fill and the thin CA when, when it'll do the trick. So. so then you kind of look at it and see what's going to touch on the back side. Yeah, okay, that'll, that'll work.
Anyway, so this is what I'm going to be doing, and I'm just not going to show it all to you. It's just going to, it's just going to take me a while. I'll bring you back when it's time to trim some of it up. See you in a while. Okay, now we're ready to sand. If my bark repair can withstand my Sandoflex, uh, I think we'll be in good shape. So I am going to start with the Sandoflex at 180 grit. I'm going to sand all the bark again, even though a lot of it's been sanded and has finish on it. Uh, it, it needs to be smoothed out from what, I, what I've just done here. I did pay very careful attention to the outside where my finish is already on out here. So I have this all nice and smooth. I very gently sanded it around there. And then I'm going to sand the inside with my two inch disc sander and that'll smooth down anything here that I've, that I've missed. Let me get my mask on, we'll see what it looks like. Cool. Nothing fell off. Now with the lathe spinning forward at about 350. Well, that's going to be pretty easy. So I'll I'll finish up the sanding. We'll get some uh, sanding sealer and finish on there. And I don't think you're going to be able to tell that I repaired it. It'll just be our little secret, okay? See you in a bit. Now there's quite a bit of deterioration right in here in the bottom of the bowl. I could have filled it. It's uh, It doesn't feel punky. You know, it's not, it's not soft, but it is rough and it is actually missing some wood in there but I don't I don't mind that for myself uh, I don't know about you guys that's that was inside the tree you know that's that's what it was like and that's what I like to do is is uh, keep everything as natural as I possibly can so when you run your hands over this you know it's all smooth and nice and silky and then you find a kind of a rough spot it's still it's still smooth it doesn't hurt your fingers it's not sharp or anything but the deterioration that was going on inside the tree but it will require a little bit of brushing in there so I'll do uh, the same here that I did on the outside two coats of sanding sealer and two coats of shellac and I don't show the application of the shellac because it looks exactly like this I put it on with a brush and a rag, no difference whatsoever. Same kind of brush, same kind of rag. I'll bring it back here in a bit and we'll take off the tenon. See you in a bit. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm going to place a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl. And bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center into that. Wiggle the piece around a little bit, make sure that it feels centered, and it does. So I'll apply some pressure and bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up and see if it's running true. I'll just hold my thumbnail against the edge of the tenon, and it sure enough is running nice and true. I'm going to pick the speed up here to about 600 RPM. I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. Now I just want to check for clearance and we have good clearance. I'm just making sure that this is higher that way than the base is. So by 
placing my gouge across there, I can see that I've got a gap and it's, it's good. And my work looks good, so we'll just continue on a little bit. That's pretty small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM. Just trying to keep it controllable, that's all. And that's about as small as I can get it with a standard grind gouge. So I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge. So that I can get in there closer and tighter. Now that's really small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Pressure towards the headstock, right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, and when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Sometimes it disintegrates like that. That's okay, no harm done. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Really helped me out. Well, here it is. One black cherry live edge bowl in the books with faked bark. Well, real bark, not necessarily where it came from. Can you tell where it is? You probably can. You probably can. If I knew this was going to be the focus of this video, I might have done a nicer job. You see? Can you see where I replaced it? It's a pretty good job. It's not going to come apart. That's nice. Looks good. Looks like a live edge bowl. It is a live edge bowl. The bark did come from this piece of wood. It's just not necessarily... <laughs> it didn't end up necessarily where it started out. That's all. Anyway, I, I, I like this piece quite a little bit. I had a lot of fun making it for you, let me tell you that. It's been a while, and it'll, it'll be a while again, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, a good time. Here's the bottom all finished up. I just signed it and wrote Black Cherry. It's a real pretty piece of 100-year-old Black Cherry from Jay in Tennessee. Thank you so much, Jay. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I've missed you a lot. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, that is totally cool. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos, as regular as I possibly can, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.